Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're passionate about photography and love giving your images a unique and artistic look, then you're in for a treat. Today I'm going to dive back into DxO Film Pack 7. It's a powerful tool that can bring the magic of analog film to your digital photos. So in this video I'm going to walk you through some advanced retouching techniques to help you unlock the full potential of DxO Film Pack 7 from enhancing colors to creating striking vintage vibes. This software is packed with features to take your editing to the next level. So let's jump in. Let me just give you a quick overview of the interface. So this is what it looks like when you're in DxO Film Pack 7. You can open it as a standalone. You can open it from inside Photo Lab. You can ins open it from inside Photoshop, etc. So You've got your presets here and you can go through and you can play with all of those. We're not even going to look at that today. I've got other videos and I'll link you to those. Then there's also Time Machine which is another absolutely fabulous feature of Film Pack 7. Again, I'm not going to get into that today. I'm going to let you go and play with that after watching maybe a couple of other videos. What I want to get in today is customize. So everything is laid out beautifully, making it super, super easy to navigate. Whether you're a beginner or a seasoned pro when it comes to editing, DxO Film Pack 7 keeps everything really straightforward. The left panel is where you're going to find your film simulations if you want to jump into using that or you can close it off and get rid of it. So on the right is where all the adjustment sliders are to fine tune your editing, whether it is going into the develop module, if you want to do split toning, you can play with luminosity masking, there is contrast, lighting, hue, saturation, lightness, tone curve, etc. Everything is there and you can toggle between color and black and white really really easy. One of the standout features of Film Pack 7 is the incredible collection of authentic film simulations. So if you come into rendering and you drop this down you've got digital film, cinematic films, color slide film, film negatives. So you can dive into all sorts of different film types in here. So perhaps if you're looking for Kodak Portra or Fujifilm Neopan. So depending on what film look that you're going for, they give you an iconic film look in just one click. So you can play with Kodachrome Gold, go to Kodak Elite Chrome 200, etc. So let's start by applying a film simulation to this image. I've chosen the Kodak Elite Chrome 200 for its vibrant color and its classic feel. So let's have a little look at the compare. So that's before and that's after. So you can really see how it's sort of affected all the colors there. But the magic doesn't stop there. You can add intensity by a dialing this effect up or down. So if you want to have not quite so much of it or if you really want to boost it up, you can play with it that way. So I'm going to sit sort of just a little bit under halfway and it's going to give you that beautiful, beautiful sort of analog feel to it without the loss of color and texture. So let's dump, jump into a couple of other things. I could apply some grain if I want to and you can play with different grain effects on this particular image, I don't want to apply any grain. I could also do some split toning. So I could come in and I can put a little bit of yellow in there, just a little bit bright. And of course you just want to drop the intensity and the saturation of those down a little bit. And of course in the shadows, I can come in and I can put a little bit of blue. Again, you can pick exactly what color that you want to put in there and you can drop the in saturation and 
the intensity down on those as well now you don't have to have the split toning you could just turn that off that's not an issue at all okay so then you've got your develop mode so you can come in and you can play with your exposure you can play with your highlights you can play around with your mid-tones shadows your blacks you can do loads in there anything that you would expect to find in another editing program like Lightroom and things like that so you've got all your basic settings there then you have color so you can boost the saturation or you can drop the saturation and boost the vibrancy a little bit or you can do a bit of both so you can play with them that's fine you then have luminosity masking so if you of course if you're not comfortable with playing with the luminosity masking you can just turn that off and you don't have to use that at all i'm sure if you jump into a few other videos that will cover specific areas of luminosity masking that will probably make more sense than what i'm trying to cover in this overall video from here you've got contrast so you can play with contrast so you've got things like micro contrast and fine contrast as well as your highlights and your tones so obviously when you play with your micro contrast it's doing some really horrible things to her skin tone but if I drop it down a little bit or not even use it then it's not doing horrible horrible things again if i play with the fine contrast and bring it all the way up it can do some drastic things as well it's really fun to get the sliders and i do encourage people to go all the way to the right and all the way to the left just to see what it does because it is a really good way of learning what each of the sliders does as opposed to just sort of popping in just a little bit Highlights again, I'm going to drop the highlights down. Mid-tones, I'm going to drop them down a little bit as well. I don't want high contrast per se in this image. I just want it to be vibrant and the colours to pop. From there, you've also got your hues that you can go and play with. So you can play with that. You've got saturation you've got lightness so there's a huge amount that you can play with in just that from here let's go and have a look at some graphical effects and some lens effects you can add frames to your images so if you want no frame there's no frame so you've got analog effect frames that you can put in and you can rotate it so you can have it on the edges if you wish to you can change the size of it so if you want to have it more in there you can do so that's something else that you can really have a lot of fun playing around with textures i've been through this before i'm not a big fan of the textures that are in here but you can add some if you wish to i don't like them but that's just me light leaks that's another one so if you're going for a really old polaroid look or or you've got old analog films that you're trying to simulate sometimes putting a little bit of a light leak and actually having the frame for the analog film in it can help you can position where you want that light leak to be you can change the color intensity you can have random so you can select randomize effects so you can play around with those so there's quite a few different ones that you can pop in there so there's gold leak or light green dots which can be quite nice too it just depends on the look that you're going for if you don't like it again you can turn it off then going into the filters you can put different filters so if you want to put a blue filter on or if you want to put a deep orange filter on and these can be quite beautiful as well look at what it's done to that it's that real sort of golden now but it's too much as far as I'm concerned so I just want to bring that down perhaps I just want a warm tone as opposed to having that real orange look so 
you can pop that in and play with it as well then you've got creative vignetting so you can if you go to the right you've got white vignetting if you go to the left you've got black you can have you can have just a touch just to sort of lighten it off and draw the eye into the center of the image you can change your midpoint on that so if you want it to be at a different area so you don't necessarily want your midpoint to be right smack bang in the middle so you can adjust that there's also your transition or your softness and then you've got your roundness so do you want it to be round or do you want it to be more square you can place so there's a little dot here you can actually place where you want your center point to be so I would want it to be just on Charlie's eyes basically so that is my center point now of course if I want to put blur in I can do that so you've got vignetting which is lens blur so I'm just going to turn that on and then you've got soft focus so I can come in and I can set the intensity now as you can see it's getting quite I'm just going to turn that one off for the moment so it's getting quite intense to have the soft focus on but if you want just a little bit you can do that or you can come over to vignetting and you can have a lens vignette so that's having blur just around the edges of your image and of course you can soften that off as well so you can set the amount of diffusion you can also set the center point for that one too so there you have it advanced retouching techniques that make the most of DxO film pack 7 and of course you can do all of these customizations on top of using the time machine or using the presets in DxO as well so from authentic film simulations to creative effects the software is packed with tools to help bring your vision to life if you're ready to explore the magic of film pack 7 download the free trial and I'll put the link below and trust me once you try it you will see why this is a must-have for any photographer so don't forget to like this video subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell for more tips and tutorials thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye